The federal government has suspended the Empire program indefinitely. This was disclosed by Berta Edu, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. According to her, the suspension was the result of some irregularities observed within the scheme and noted that an investigation will be launched into our funds were expended since the beginning of the program. There was also a promises from the federal government never to owe again, noting that this restructuring and transformation will birth an expanded program to reach beneficiaries aged 18 to 40. The previous age limit was 35. The new program will be targeting 5 million beneficiaries in five years at a pace of 1 million per year under the graduate and non-graduate streams. The Empower program was launched by President Muhammadu Buhari's administration to tackle youth unemployment and help increase social development. Joining me to discuss this is Afolabi Imokwede, CEO, Peer Investments Limited, former senior special assistant to the president on job creation. And if I have the privilege of saying it, I always properly call him the father of empower. I know it was much more of his ideation translated into policy. Afolabi, good to see you good. Hello. Thanks you. Thank you so much. Okay. I, 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 I can hear you now. Uh, Afolabi is actually in transit somewhere. So in one airport somewhere in Toronto, Canada, but you know what? Uh, I gotcha. I, you know, gotcha, as they, as they usually say. Afalabi, it's not going to be funny. I guess somebody like you may be called upon to also give account of, uh, of how Empower was, uh, was implemented. Junior era, given what the minister just stated. How would you want to respond to that? Thank you very much, uh, and thanks for having me. Uh, I think uh, since this uh, announcement came up, I got some call and I took up this message is uh, forwarded uh, to my attention. Uh, but one thing we need to understand is that government is a continent. Uh, we uh, initiated on this program uh, under the prior administration uh, between uh, 2015 and uh, 2019, when I was in the Soviet and uh, 2020, uh, precisely uh, the program which used to be uh, in the presidency uh, was uh, moved to this new ministry and the extra humanitarian affairs. And we uh, had uh, uh, the former minister uh, uh, supervising all the sites and, and so uh, effectively, uh, during 2020, uh, uh, I did not manage or speak to anything in now or any of our history. And that of the Ministry of Nigeria and Friends will be a hundred of books. Uh, we had different sessions uh, with the good task uh, from the Minister. And, uh, and I'm sure now uh, they will also hand it uh, to this uh, present administration of President Mulamba too. Uh, so uh, I didn't want to be a hundred of books. Uh, but at any point in time, if I called the combined, we would uh, speak to the fact speak to numbers and speak to what we did for our way of So you are pretty much expecting their call at any time for accountability. You're, that's part of democracy anyway. And, and what, exactly. But I don't quite know that uh, we will get the call. I, I imagine that uh, the, my successors in office uh, between uh, 2020 and 2023 uh, will perhaps need to uh, you know, need to explain better uh, to the honorable uh, minister. And my point is, uh, we handed over to, and um, I imagine that things is not But I can not just have any point in time speech. Uh, what we uh, what Afalabi. did, what we did, and uh, you know. Afalabi, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to say yeah. I was, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to, okay, let me put it this way. I, I felt I knew how you, in some respects, uh, you were 
quite instrumental to the idea that ultimately became empire. What inspired it? What was uh, what what pushed you to it? What made you think about it? And we then get we will subsequently get in further questions to the uh, implementation. But what inspired it? Yeah. So basically, um, as we all you know, uh, Nigeria has been plagued and uh, with what extent jobless growth. Uh, meaning that uh, yeah, we do have a uh, GDP which is used to represent how well or how unwell an economy does. And uh, yeah, but then our uh, GDP was indeed growing, and uh, let's remember I'm talking about uh, back to 2015. Uh, so our GDP uh, grew uh, in minimum of a single digit. Uh, at the same time, uh, this, it was, this was also the era when it was come out of uh, some type of oil price, oil price boom, uh, you know, 20, 2011, 2012, 2013, and then of course we started having a decline in 2014, 2015. Uh, but the point is, even in the time of our high growth, uh, our growth was not uh, resulting in jobs. Uh, so we had to turn the job best group. And that's what basically I was brought in at that time to study and to try and really understand what is the problem, why we not uh, having jobs. Some of the things uh, we did uh, do at that time uh, was to try and use that Nigeria as a large market, uh, and look at the economy as a large market. And say that uh, for there to be jobs, so I think mean, uh, it's always explained in um, uh, economics where all the factors of production need to come together uh, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. Uh, and so all of these factors come together to be able to create the to be able to create the jobs. And so if um, you're having a situation where there are now new jobs, we need to understand what we So we did. Uh, we went into a series of uh, strategy sessions uh, where when we came up with the National Job Creation Strategy uh, documented 2016, March 2016 precisely uh, at that time. And what we did was to look at uh, the various sectors of the economy and look at the sectors that uh, we, we felt would give us a uh, mass number of jobs uh, for which construction uh, was one uh, agri and uh, agripreneur uh, was another uh, ICT uh, technology was was one and uh, we also looked at uh, retail trade also retail trade and um, mind you we knew that there were also many other sectors that were potential uh, sectors like the hospitality sector the uh, the mining sector and a few others like that uh, non oil and these sectors were all non oil. Uh, sectors, and, uh, but the goal was within a short term, what would we do uh, in these sectors to create, um, create the jobs? So, what we then did during that uh, study was we found that across each of these sectors, if you look at the sectors as better populars of the building, across each of these sectors, uh, and skills, uh, relevant skills, uh, acquisition relevant skills, delivery, quality of skills, uh, was a cross cutting challenge. You know, across um, each and every of them um, of the sector. So we needed to begin to look at how do we address uh, that issue in the short meeting. Uh, and uh, but then we also understood that the fact that you uh, uh, you train people uh, from the jobs does not equal the jobs uh, to be created. So meaning therefore that we needed to engage in a type of backward integration, having uh, the, the industry, uh, you know, having the industry in the front end, so we call it the demand-led industry program, uh, the industry sectors were in the front, and uh, the skills training was done in the back end in the type of a backward integration. And the goal, therefore, was once you finish, uh, once you get done, The, the graduates in the markets. So, basically, that was what um, uh, the MPAP okay. uh, 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 works for. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, we were doing all this. Yeah. Uh, I must confess yeah. at this juncture to my public 
that um, I've known Afalabi <laughs> since the days when we were holding forth for the skills empowerment of young Nigerians about nine, 10, 11 <laughs> years ago. Uh, we, and when he started, you know, when uh, he was invited to join the government as a result of the presentation he did, to the newly elected administration of Buhari then, uh, and when he was ideating the empire, two of the training schools that I envisioned and that I run, I have a training school that I'm a part owner of in automotive mechatronics and one in building and construction. Uh, we actually worked with them initially, but uh, at some point, especially after the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari, and the, uh, the political minders put their fingers to it. You got disillusioned. Some of us who wanted to do it the right way also got, got disillusioned. I remember you flew to Lagos one day and came to my office and said, hey, bon, it's like, I'm going to walk away from this. I was even telling you some of the, some of the, some of the uh, words you used. In, you should be very, very careful because uh, they could see you as the enemy of the government. Uh, but eventually you resigned. So what instructed the disillusionment? Why the disillusionment? Well, I, so I think the, uh, the point really is that, uh, well, so again, like I said, uh, regarding this particular assignment, uh, on the, what we did. So let me just wrap up my thoughts the last time and say that impact was not created because remember we uh, the president of uh, Warren to go back uh, the government had the uh, deep of recession. And just like any other government or even world, you spend your way out of uh, a recession. And uh, so uh, we the social investment was one of those ways and uh, which we would immediately and you then you walk and then you also exit into the relationship. And so that, that's one of the things that is where they go at the time of the million and young people reach up before we can get it, we had a five hundred percent of the and the check called the values in and then the first time of a hundred thousand. In the long run, you And I'm glad you mentioned uh, your role as an industry partner in automatic products and patronage and the idea from the construction. The point for me is we want a situation where uh, these young people uh, not only get trained, but they get absorbed uh, either uh, in full time jobs or in a value chain of entrepreneurs. If you remember what you also have done. Uh, we got to make it and make at that time in Lagos, where we have trained our technicians uh, from a type of property and they became the store manager uh, for method uh, uh, and automobile uh, and services in the Nico uh, for station, train stations across the country. That was the kind of model. Now, uh, 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 same government, same, same, same party, uh, but the um, minister, the uh, then minister, um, had our own ideas in terms of how. Um, Afolabi? She wanted to. Uh, Afolabi? I, I guess I must have done myself. Uh, the, the greatest dictator of a program like this is time. Uh, and it's unfortunate we may have to do this uh, again. Uh, you know, at some point, uh, I, I'm really very grateful that you took time off connecting the flight. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will do it again. I, I just want to say thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Afalabi, for the opportunity. Today, we start a new segment. It's going to be a very short segment, but every day we will have the story of how Nigeria came about. The 500 years that led to Nigeria and the 63 years that we have lived. 
places, personalities, and major projects. And today we start with this. Today's Toba, River Niger. The name Niger originates from the Latin word. Uh, the name River Niger originates from the Latin word Niger, meaning black, which some said was applied to the river due to some parts of its waters that is muddy and dark colored. The river became widely known as River Niger during the colonial era, which came into being after the 1885 Berlin Conference that institutionalized colonialism in West Africa or the River Niger and the River Congo areas of Africa. Nigeria was named after the River Niger as it is one of the major geographical features that played a significant role in the country's history, economy, and culture. The name Nigeria was suggested by British journalist Flora Shaw, the trophy wife of one of the first generation British colonial administrators, Lord Frederick Lugard. And it was officially adopted in 1914 when the amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectories with the colony of Lagos took place. It must be stated that albeit the ethnographical portraiture of the long winding river this back to millennia, the 18th and 19th century explorers of River Niger enriched us with the literary accounts of its curse and caste. Mongo Park, 1771, to 1806, Scottish explorer who made two expeditions to West Africa, including a journey along the Niger River in search of the source of the river. His travels provided important insights into the geography and people of the region. Hugh Clapperton, 1788 to 1827, Scottish explorer who made two major expeditions to West Africa and traveled extensively in the region, including the area around the Niger River. Clapperton, along with his team, reached Sokoto, a major city along the Niger, making important observations about the kingdom and its people. Richard Landa, 1804 to 1834, British explorer and assistant to Clapperton on a second exploratory journey that led to his Clapperton's death in Sokoto, who, along with his brother John Landa, completed the journey down the Niger River started by Mongo Park. They were the first Europeans to successfully navigate the entire length of the river and brought back valuable information about the region. Heinrich Barth, 1821 to 1865, German explorer and scholar who embarked on a five-year journey across West Africa, including an exploration of Niger River region. His detailed observations and writings greatly expanded the understanding of the region's geography, culture, and history. Alexander Gordon Lang, 1793 to 1826, Scottish explorer who made an ill-fated attempt to reach the city of Timbuktu in present-day Mali by following the course of the Niger River. He faced numerous challenges and was ultimately killed during his journey. But his efforts contributed to the growing knowledge of River Niger and its surrounding areas. These explorers played crucial roles in mapping, documenting, and advancing knowledge about River Niger and the regions it flows through. John Newton, 1823 to 1895, British explorer who embarked on a journey to explore the Niger River and its surrounding territories. Newton conducted geographical surveys and documented his observations of the region's flora, fauna, and societies. River Niger is one of the major rivers, third longest after rivers Nile and Congo in Africa. It holds great significance for Nigeria. The source of River Niger can be traced to the Guinea, to the Guinea Islands, located in southern Guinea, southeastern Guinea. From its source, the river winds its way through Mali, Niger, Benin, Benin Republic, and Nigeria finally reaching the Atlantic Ocean in Nigeria's Niger Delta. 
The river has a total length of approximately 4,180 kilometers, 2,600 miles. As River Niger flows through different regions, countries, and nationalities in West Africa in general and Nigeria in particular, it is referred to by several names. In the outside speaking areas, it flows through, it is known as Quora or Quora, which instructed the naming of the large Yoruba speaking state of Kwara to solidify its Aousa Fulani dominated traditional rulership and majority Islamic re religion. In Yoruba speaking Oshun state, it is called Oya Odoya. In parts of Kogi state, the river is called Egerewo and or Eba. In Igbo speaking Anambra state, it assumes the name Orimiri or Oshimili. Finally, as it reaches the Niger Delta in Delta State, it is called Fokados River. River Niger plays a crucial role in the socioeconomic life of Nigeria. Transportation. River Niger serves as a navigable waterway providing a means of transportation for people and goods. Water supply. The river is a vital source of fresh water for irrigation, domestic use, and industrial activities. Hydroelectric power. Nigeria annexes the power generated by the river through hydroelectric dams, such as Kanji and Jeba dams, fishing and aquatic resources. River Niger supports a thriving fishing industry, providing a source of food and income for many communities. Cultural and tourism value. River Niger is imbued with cultural significance and plays a role in traditional practices and celebrations of local communities. One prominent one is the, okay, it also attracts tourists and appreciates its scenic beauty, cultural come religious values and natural wonders. And that is it on the show tonight. I am Bola Oba. Have a good night.